Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to another episode in the Game Dev Toolbox. A uh, look at the essential tools for every game developer. Uh, today we're looking at another art utility, uh, which also doubles as a library. It's called Image Magic, and if you've never heard of it, Image Magic is as old as time itself. It's been around forever, um, at least 10, 15 years kind of thing. It's one of those libraries um, that is pretty much a Swiss Army Knife tool if you know about it, and undiscovered and sort of arcane if you've never heard of it. But don't worry, it's not as scary as it looks. And point blank, if there is a manipulation you need to do with an image, you can do it with image magic. Now there's no GUI here. This is an entirely either command line or code driven thing. We're not gonna look at code at all here. This is not about libraries. This is just about tools. But the nice thing is due to being a set of command line utilities for image manipulation, um, you can incorporate that into your build process however you want. So if you've got a build script, you can automate all of this completely so you can build your own tools on top of it. Also, since it's a library, you can embed all of this functionality into your own code if you wish, and you will be staggered by what Image Magic can do. Now, I'm only going to cover the very, very basics here. I could spend probably five hours talking about Image Magic and still not cover the entirety of what it can do. So first off, to grab it, go to this website I've got here, imagemagic.org. Um, you just go ahead, grab the download. It's available for pretty much every platform of any relevance. There's uh, an installer for Windows. If you do that route, make sure it gets added to your system path. That way you can use it from a command line anywhere. And it's gonna add a number of commands to your um, command line, basically. And these are them. Uh, there's animate, compare, composite, conjure, convert, display, identify, import, mogrify, montage, and stream. And truth of the matter is, I only really ever use montage, mogrify, and convert myself, but each one's kind of got a very specific purpose. Today we'll be looking at specifically uh, convert, montage, and uh, mogrify. And we're gonna do like a real set example of stuff that you would probably do in game development. So I have a, a tile set that we're gonna play with. This is the results of my uh, code working here. I'm just gonna clear out my out file. But here we have this tile set. It's made of 32 by 32 pixel tiles, like so, very standard. Now what you might wanna do is split this out into a group of independent images. This is the kind of stuff that image magic shines at. So let's do that right away. So again, these are 32 by 32 pixels. Um, the width and height doesn't really matter just as long as it's consistent. So let's fire up a terminal. Let's go to the folder in question. Uh, what the hell did I call it? Um, demo. All right, so there's our image, royal tile set, dash tile b.png. And now what we want to do is go ahead and split that out into uh, 32 by 32 tiles instead of one giant set. And it's as simple as convert. Now, of course, when you did the install, make sure that you added it to the path. And you may have to do a reboot if you're on XP or possibly Windows 7 to get that path to update. So if this doesn't work right away, make sure you do a reboot. Uh, but you probably shouldn't have to. Um, Convert-crop, and then 32 by 32, so the size to crop to. Our source file, like so. Uh, our directory out. And what I wanna do is I wanna give it a sequence of names. So this is gonna come out and use the percent %d. If you're from C or C++ background, you'll immediately recognize that, but it's basically a wildcard replacement to say, put a number, a sequence of numbers here. And Image Magic will automatically do it on a frame by frame basis. So that is the code there to do this conversion. Now let's just go ahead and let it do so. So, okay, that went ahead and ran. Now let's go open up. So that was into our out directory. I open that up and now you'll see we have 255 tiles split from a single image into separate images, all 32 by 32 in size. So that's how simple it is. Now let's say you wanted to go the other way and you wanted to turn those all of those separate images into a single image. Well, image uh, magic has you covered there too. So let's go into that folder we just created. And here what we're going to do is use the command montage instead. So montage star.png. Uh, now, you know what? I will list all of the particular commands I do in the comments um, to this post below. So if you can't read what I'm doing on screen, don't worry, I'll, I'll comment them in the order that I do them here. Uh, star.png tile. And what we're gonna say is we want eight per row. And we don't care about eight by what. You could, you could come in here and say four by four, nine by three, whatever. But what I'm gonna do is eight by, and then however many there are. Um, and then what we're gonna do is set the geometry. So this is basically saying the dimensions of each tile. 
uh, and we're just going to do it 32 by 32, and we're going to put it to out.png. Now, you could also have added plus 1, plus 1, and that'll put a border on the x and y direction, or plus 6, plus 6, and it'll put a 6 pixel border each direction, etc. But we're going to keep it simple. We're basically going to turn it back into what it was, just only 8 tiles wide this time. So just go ahead and run that command, and now we will see. Ta da! So image magic is just for mass bulk image manipulation. It's a magical thing. And since this is all command line, again, you can pipe this all into your workflow and make this as transparent as you want so you can have it as automated as you need it to be. Now, another common thing to have to do is um, convert stuff. Now, we can do a simple convert. Like we just did out.ping. And I could just go convert out.ping to out.gif and done. And you'll see now I have a gif version and a ping version. That simple. Now, we could also do it for a bulk number of them. So we're going to turn all of our uh, pings into JPEGs. And we can do that via star.jpg and then plus a join and then out percent d dot. So again, out uh, here, we'll, we'll stay consistent. Underscore percent d dot gif. Actually, I don't want to do gif. Gif takes a long time. JPEG. Oh, it was JPEG in. Sorry, I'm being stupid here. We're going to turn PNGs into JPEG, like so. Just run that, and now you will see all JPEGs and PNGs. Now you can also do it in line if you want, and for that there's a, a command called Mogrify. Now we could do the same thing and spit new versions out, um, or you can just do simple enough Mogrify, no parameters, so just um, Let's say mogrify format png star. And this will now turn all of our um, JPEGs back into PNGs, as you can see here. And mogrify, so what the mogrify is as opposed to the convert, mogrify works on the thing that you're working with. So instead of making a copy, we just modified it. Now, mogrify is by no means limited there. We can do some pretty magic things with mogrify as well. So let's, for example, uh, Mogrify, and what we're going to do is size up all of our ping files. So watch down here. Let me go to where the, okay, so there's a ping up, for example. So Mogrify resize 200% star.png. And they are all 200% bigger. So now they are 64 by 64 in size. And that was how fast and how easy it is. And by no means is it limited to just resizing. You can do so many things with, with there's so many modifiers you can make you can um, change the gamma you can tint it you can blur it etc so let's do an example of a blur so mogrify blur 22 pixel radius actually it's 44 pixel radius all pings now watch the ping down below see now they are big and blurry uh, so we could add more and more blur on them it's still running that one takes a little bit more time or if you want for example we could do something like uh, quickly add a border around. So modify dash border two pixels dash border color black star dot png. And watch down below. And everything has a black border is double its size that it was to start with and is blurred. So you can get an idea of the sheer power that image magic packs in it. Now, I'm not going to go on any further. That's it for demonstration. So it's trying to give you a bit of an overview of what it's capable of. Um, but you go in here and like, for example, Mogrify, uh, you can come in, here are the options. So we showed you about three of them. You wanted to sepia tone it, you wanted to um, swirl, transform, trim it down, uh, change the alpha channel, add shadows, etc. There are commands for that. And every single one of these tools has just about that many commands on top of it. So chances are, if you need to change an image, or more importantly, here's where image magic really shines. If you need to change a number of images all at once, I guarantee you, whatever the heck it is you need to do, Image Magic can do it. So that is why this, by all means, should be in your toolbox. Of course, it's also completely open source, cross-platform, and completely free. So no reason not to check it out. Now, it is a little daunting. The commands seem a little unintuitive at first, but the, the obvious things you need to do, like uh, mass conversion or um, in... Uh, resize or whatever they're pretty easy to turn to figure out or you just throw image magic and then what you're trying to accomplish into a search and someone will have a result for you 
So definitely check out Image Magic. It's a great little utility, and you can see how this will be very useful for game developers and programmers of all types, um, just to fit into your pipeline uh, for converting and handling assets. So hope you enjoyed that. See y'all later. Bye.